Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. So we're at day four, and if you're with me at day four, I'm really pleased because it tells me you're very serious about your learning, very serious about gaining fundamentals, and I'm actually so pleased that you're here with me at day four. We've got a lot to learn. My career tip for Day four is don't burn bridges. Don't do something in the workplace that you will regret and could impact you negatively for years and years. Don't be fooled. The workplace can be very stressful and life in general can bring lots of trauma to you throughout your workplace time. I've been in the workplace over 42 years and I know how difficult it is and there are seasons and times in your life that tremendous pressure can come on you from your boss is micromanaging, coworker, you're just having a lot of conflict. You could be going through a divorce. You could have family problems. Problems. You could have health issues. You could have so many other things that are just crushing you. You can make really bad mistakes in the workplace. Walk out and just walk off the job. Blow up on somebody in the workplace. Say things that you can't take back, no matter what you say, are going to impact you for a long time. There are times when you need help in the workplace. This is not the time when you want to think, I can work it out myself. Because in general, that's not going to happen. Get some help. Don't go to a 25-year-old. They just don't have enough work experience nor life experience. Is there somebody in your workplace that's got family, seems stable, seems to be, has some wisdom? Go talk to them. Does your, does your job have an employee assistance program? Get a counselor. Find some help. You need help when you're in those pressure cooker environments of life where you're stressed and you are in a fog of emotion. It happens to everybody. There's no one exempt. You need to get some help. There are times you may need to go see an employment lawyer. If you feel like you're getting in a legal issue in the job, don't hesitate to seek out a lawyer. If it's just personal stuff, go find a church. Many pastors deal with family issues every day and a a lot of times they can give you some really good wisdom. Now, just like I have done these few days of helping you understand Windows applications, I've already done this same thing, doing it the same way for the operating system. I did a four-part series with notes and slides. I'll show you each of those videos in a minute. I use Process Explorer, Process Monitor, and many other system internal tools. I explore how Windows is structured, scheduler algorithms. We're going to look at critical processes. So check out this four-part series and be sure to download the notes and slides for these videos. Start with Windows 10 Architecture Unlocking Troubleshooting Secrets. Next you'll want to go to Windows 10 Critical Processes and Virtualization Security. The third one is Windows 10 Learn About ARMS, Windows Memory Usage, and Hyper-V. And then finally we're going to go into Advanced Memory Diagnostics and Troubleshooting. So in these four videos I actually take you further into Process Explorer. I explain more of what Process Explorer can do for you, but it's related to the operating system rather than applications and processes. As always, I'm very careful about my sources. In this case, one of my resources is the book by Mark Rosanovich and Aaron Margolis. It's Troubleshooting with the Windows System Internal Tools. Here are the ISBNs. It's a second edition. If you want a great book on understanding system internal tools, you want this one. All right, let's get back to Process Explorer, and we're going to look at metrics because Process Explorer has many metrics, and we need to understand understand what they mean and how to apply them. I go a little deeper into Process Explorer. In the columns up here, when we go to 
the columns, right, and select and add columns. We have tabs, process network, process disk, and here we can see how a process impacts network, how the process impacts a disk, how it impacts memory. And in each of these tabs is just all of these metrics that are very difficult to understand. So let's take some time, learn them, and see how we can use them for troubleshooting and many other ways of analyzing our software. Let's start with the left-hand column. We have receives, delta receives, sends, delta resends others, and delta others. Let's start with receives, sends, and others. These are classification simply an operation. So whenever a receive operation happens, you'll get a count of one. If you get three receive operations, you'll get a count of three. The same for sends, the same for others. Over on the left-hand side is a measurement of operations. Now, delta receives, what is that? That means based on the refresh rate of Process Explorer, which by default, remember, is one second, then delta receive would be how many operation receive operations happened in one second. Delta sends would be how many send operations happened in one second. Now, be very careful. If I go back to Process Explorer and I go to View and I go to Update Speed and I change it to five seconds and then I go back to that same exact column, come up here to Network, now delta is five seconds. How how many received operations in five seconds? How Delta send is how many send operations in five seconds. So Mark couldn't put receive per second or sends per second because it's based on the refresh rate you choose for Process Explorer. There are good reasons why you would want a slower refresh rate because honestly, Process Explorer is going to impact your system. So if you want Process Explorer to impact the system less, you would say, Set your refresh rate for the, the tool to say maybe 10 seconds. So it's not impacting the server and you can analyze your software. That said, the default is one second. So normally, unless you change your refresh rate, you have receive operations and then receive operations per one second. Only if your refresh rate, your update speed is one second. So make sure you understand that anytime you have delta, it's based on the refresh rate of Process Explorer. Now let's look on the right hand side. Now we have receive bytes. That makes sense. That's going to be cumulative. We're going to measure how many bytes that we receive and it, that value would just grow, 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 grow. Below it is delta receive bytes. How many bytes we receive per refresh cycle and the default is one second. So it would be how many bytes received in one second unless you change that, re that refresh rate. So delta send bytes would be how many bytes were sent in one second. And now you can better understand these metrics which are at first very confusing. So delta metrics kind of give you real-time measurements. So if I'm looking at delta read bytes, I'm really looking at how often I'm reading in bytes real-time, every second. I could go to a half a second refresh time and even get a more real-time. So delta is the change in value between the one second refresh rate that you have default in Process Explorer. Now Process Explorer looks at I.O. a lot with processes and the hardware it's talking to, whether it's a network card or a disk or whatever. This diagram is a very accurate Windows 10 diagram showing you from the process in user mode all the way down to the disks that you have in your laptop or your PC. Stop this slide and take a look at this diagram. It's very interesting as to what takes place. Now back to Process Explorer and refresh rates. It's very important that anytime we look at a delta metric, it's based on the refresh rate of Process Explorer. So if I'm looking at receive bytes delta, it could be bytes per half a second. It could be bytes per second. It could be bytes per two seconds. So remember the refresh rate in Process Explorer impacts the delta metric. Now here's an example where the delta metric is so important. There's two ways that Process Process Explorer allows us to look at context switch. Now remember, context switch is when we take the threads of our process and we execute them. Here are two great ways of looking at this activity, but every time we take our threads to the scheduler and they get executed, it's called
called a context switch. I've selected columns. I'm in the process performance tab. Go down here on the left at the bottom and you'll see two metrics. One is called context switch and one is called context switch delta. Now context switch is cumulative. In other words, every time your threads come up to the, the CPU and are executed, it's going to measure that. It's going to say, okay, they got executed. And over time, as many times as your threads were executed, it's going to have that value 5,000 times, 10,000 times. If you leave Process Explorer running all day, it's going to show you how many times that process was executed in the CPU over the entire workday. Look at context switch delta. That's going to tell you how many times your threads were executed per second. That's going to be a real-time view of what's really happening to that process and that CPU. So look at my diagram over on the left and you'll see context switch. I've got it in the column. That's just measuring what's happening right now and it's cumulative. The longer I leave Process Explorer running, if they're getting executed, that value will tend, tend to go up. On Right beside it, I've got context switch delta. Now look at CPU usage. I've got two processes highlighted, system and svchost.exe. Look at CPU usage. They're both 0.01% CPU usage, which tells you according to CPU utilization, they're using the CPU exactly the same. But go over to context switch delta. Big difference. System had 354 threads executed in one second. SVC host had 78 threads executed in one second. There's a big difference between these two processes. Context switch delta is the most accurate CPU usage that you can use with Process Explorer. If you remember in our last lesson, you were assigned to a small group of IT pros and you were assessing a software package your company was thinking about buying. I showed you a couple things and metrics that you could use and you could send those metrics to your boss to give him some idea of the impact. But what I didn't show you was networking and I said I would. Well, here we are. So here's your networking metrics and we want to assess that software to see what's its network impact on the client. So which one of those would you choose to send that value to your supervisor. So if you chose these three, receive bytes, send bytes, and other bytes, you are correct because we really want a cumulative value of all the network traffic and bytes over the course of a day. That would be a great value to send to your supervisor. So I have another troubleshooting network performance problem. If I'm trying to determine which process is impacting the network real time, which metric would you choose? If you chose Delta Receive Bytes, Delta Send Bytes, and Delta Other Bytes, you were correct. But actually, if you chose Delta Total Bytes, you chose the best answer because it would take less space on your console and it would still give you the values that you wanted. So if you did that, you're doing good. So I'm going to launch Edge in just a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and set up my columns. I'm going to put Receive Bytes, Delta Receive Bytes, which is going to give me that real time, Send Bytes, and Delta Send Bytes. And I'm going to say OK, and then I'm going to get them set up on my display. All right, so I slid things over so we can look at network traffic, and then I'm going to launch Edge. Edge will generate lots of junky network traffic. So let's slide down here to look at Edge, and we can begin to see right away. But we're really not done here. We want to start sorting. If I want to look at who's impacting the most, I, can, I need to sort and come up here, and then I can see who is pulling the most network traffic over a long period of time. So over here, I've got my delta. Let me sort that one. And now I can see real time who of all the processes right now per second is accessing the network real time. So it gives me more of a real time value. Whereas network receive, when I sort that, it's giving me cumulative over time. I can see what process has pulled the most amount of traffic over time. So keep in mind, although you add these columns and now you understand better what they are. Make sure you do your sorting so you can see the results that you're looking for. An important feature of Process Explorer is the mouse over tips. Let's look. Mark, when he wrote Process Explorer, he built these mouse over tips. So let me 
click on my process. You can see it everywhere my mouse goes, it drops down information at specific places in Process Explorer. Here I can actually see the most amazing command line with switches and arguments to blow your brains away. This is actually part of the widget infrastructure and you can see the command line is quite extensive. Here I'm actually hovering over a service and it actually shows me the services that are actually be running by that generic SVC host file or process. You can come over here and see all the command line and path for each process. This is really, really handy. They're called mouse over tips. If I launch my system information, which is a graphical view, I can take my mouse over and it actually will show me that spike and IO was what process and what process ID. Also, if I go to CPU, it can show me who caused that green spike in CPU usage. I can see it's Process Explorer. So there, there's a wonderful array of helpful mouse tips in Process Explorer. Get out there and drive around a little bit and see. You've probably been wondering why I haven't shared much information about Process Hacker. The reason is once you learn Process Explorer well, it's a real easy move to go to this other tool, this open source tool. We can come to Process Hacker under View, the View option, and you can see it's Refresh Interval. So you can choose the same speeds that we saw in Process Explorer. You can do that also in Process Hacker. Now the metrics that are available in Process Hacker are very similar to Process Explorer. We can come up to the columns, right mouse click and choose a column. The, the way it's displayed is different, but if you look at the list of metrics that are available to put in your console, they're very similar to what you saw in Process Explorer. So there's not a lot of change here. Actually, Mark has more features in Process Explorer than Process Hacker. Process Hacker has a very nice graphical display. Notice I'm at IO and look down here. Everything listed here is delta and over here is totals. So here we can see the cumulative me metrics and over here we see more of the real time. Notice in Process Hacker the tooltips still apply. So as you hover over any area of the graph it gives you that process and its PID. This is really really handy. Now the authors of Process Hacker did allow other developers to contribute and I did grab one of the plugins over here on the network tab. I added the plugin that identifies the country of origin for the IP address. So I can see all of these remote IP addresses that my processes are connected to out there on the internet. It identifies what country they're from. That was very interesting. I really like that. So just be aware it's available. Another nice feature of Processor Hacker in the network tab is you can pick any IP address that you're connected to. So I see a process and I'm connected to some host on the internet. I can right mouse click, go to tools, I can ping it, trace route, and then I can look, pull up a who is of who that IP address belongs to. Back to Process Explorer, one option you really want to make sure you check, because if you're analyzing, say, your server, and you're spending some time really looking at maybe a service or an application or whatever, it's really easy to get two Process Explorers running and not even realize it. So one, under the options, you can, you can come over here and check, and it says allow only one instance. Many applications do not allow you to run two copies of the same application. That's called two instances. This particular tool allows you to check that box so that only one instance of Process Explorer can run at a time. Now there is some help in Process Explorer. If you go to help, you can hit that and it pulls up a, sometimes you can just walk through it. It gives you some general information. It's not as extensive as the book, but it's helpful. Now I will be coming back using these same tools. I'll be using auto runs from System Terminals. I'll be using Process Explorer and I will show you how to use these tools to remove detect malware, viruses, any kind of unwanted code. These are powerful tools to do that, but I will keep that separate, a separate set of lectures. You'll see that coming soon.